What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all having a good weekend. I know it's been a little bit since I've posted a video, but I assure you it's for good reason. Today, we have Susie from Be You, Be Happy here. Uh, we're going to be talking about her journey, um, some of her social media, and how she kind of came to learn how important the link between physical and mental health was in her life and kind of how that's helped her, you know, get by and get to where she's at today. And we'll probably get into a whole bunch more, but I don't want to give it all away. So without further ado, let me bring her in. Hello. Hi, Matt. How's it going? Going good so far. <laughs> Thanks um, for having me. No, thank you. I, I mean, it was um, it was one of those things for us where it was a surprise to me, um, because I reached out a long time ago and I was like, "Hey, do you want to come on and share your story?" And you're like, "No, videos not really for me." And I'm like, "Okay, I mean that, that that's fine. It's not for everybody." And then you're like, "Actually, I know it's been a while, but is it still on the table?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah make time <laughs> oh i remember the first time like, oh what no <laughs> you're not the only one that had that reaction either no i'm not there yet and i still don't think i'm there yet but at one point you have to jump across your shadow and just really though i mean that's that's the only way that we get to where we want to be is by taking those chances and kind of pushing ourselves outside of our comfort zone and who knows it might be something that you end up liking and then you're like oh god i gotta I got to start my own channel or I got to, I can make videos on this topic or do this. And so, exactly. or I learned it's not my thing, but at least I tried. Exactly. That That's all, that's all that we can do in our life is, is just try. That's it. Um, so for those who maybe don't know you and aren't familiar with your social media, why don't you introduce yourself? All right. So like you said, my name is Susie. I'm actually born and raised in Germany. Um, and even as a teenager, I always like, English speaking, living in English speaking countries, and I spent a whole bunch of time in the UK. So I always, always thought as a teenager, hey, I'm going to move to the UK <laughs> one day. That that was my my dream. Well, guess what? As usual, life completely proved me wrong. So when I did my master studies, I got a chance to move to the states to Iowa, <laughs> and that's where I actually ended up over ten years ago. I just realized that that was. This April, 11 years ago. Wow, <laughs> that's <while>. crazy. <laughs> um, I mean, I effectively moved to the States uh, a little after that because I still had to finish my master's, but yeah, it's been right. 10 years, incredible. But yeah, now I live in the States uh, completely. I switched states in between quite a bit, um, but now I'm in the Carolinas. I uh, work a usual eight to five office job. And if you read my blog, all the difficulties that come with it, you will read. Um, but it's actually in the automobile industry, so completely away from what I show my blog. I never would have guessed that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and in my free time, I enjoy photography, cooking, fitness, reading, and, of course, my cats. I would show you one, but she doesn't want to be bothered. <laughs> of course not. That's how they are. <laughs> um. So why don't you share a little, whatever you're comfortable with. You know, you don't have to share a lot. You can share as much as you want. Um, tell everybody a little bit about your journey and kind of how, what's led you to where you are. Okay. Um, so again, to go back to my teenager phase, I was always interested in mental health. Mm -hmm. Because A, I was a female teenager trying to figure myself out. And let's be real, being a teenager is not easy what is normal yeah. with all the hormones going berserk what do you call normal yeah and i had friends and family members around me that had actually mental health issues so i was always interested in just how this works what do you call normal when do you see that something is not right and i was just always curious on those topics but that's not where this really started for me that was just a curiosity around me actually two years ago I personally, and like you said, I'm not going to go into too many details. Um, I was in a rough and dark patch myself. Um, 
and I was questioning basically every decision I ever made, questioning myself, wasn't happy with anything. I felt just stuck in that little rabbit hole and I didn't know where to go. So overthinking and going down those spirals is an absolute understatement. Yeah. But what I thought was interesting is when I was in that phase, people reached out to me and I'm not talking about like the best friend or your family. No, people outside of that inner circle reached out and tried to talk to me and actually opened up about themselves too. Right. And that's when I really got reminded of this whole uh, mental health topic again, how important it is and how, how it's not talked about in, in, yeah, just out there on a regular basis. It's more this, yeah black box everybody knows it everybody goes through those phases but everybody hushes it and doesn't want to talk about it so i just thought hey i need to do something to just get that out there give a get a platform to for people to hear about it to maybe talk about it right or simply to just read hey i'm not alone in this there are actually other people that may go through the same yeah you'll, you'll be surprised i mean when i first started um sharing my story publicly and kind of being like, okay, well, this is me. This is what I deal with. This is what I do. Um, and, and that was just my hope. Like if maybe if I um, share my story, uh, other men would be like, look, we don't have to, we don't have to hide this. We don't have to be ashamed that we cry, that we show our feelings, you know, that we have issues too. Um, and then See, that spiraled into everything. That the people that did reach out to me were male. Mm -hmm. they all were <laughs> and, and that's, that's what surprised me so much they didn't want anyone to know but they opened up and i was like wow you'll be I surprised mean, honored that it did open up i mean i've had i've had people you know I've, I've had the privilege of making friends with people from all across the world because they see uh, my social media and they're like they just message me and they're like hey i'm I've got this going on. Do you have any advice or do you know any pages? And I'll point them towards the best one that I know, or maybe something that I've written or, or done. And that's really just how it happens, you know, by, by you being yourself and putting yourself out there and you're like, look, this is me and all my problems and all my baggage. Just basically take the take it or leave it, mm -hmm. you know, either accept me or don't. That's fine. I'm cool either way. And I'm still going to make my progress and, and that's not going to deter me. Um, one thing that I know we talked about <clears throat> in our pre-chat was you had a realization um, between the link between your physical and mental health and kind of how you realized for yourself that in order to, for you personally to fix, I don't know why I want to say fix, more like make progress with one, you had to start working on the other. So can you talk a little bit about kind of how that became clearer for you and kind of the approach that you take? Actually, there are two points because I just a couple weeks ago, I think I had that, it's called reminder again, mm -hmm. and, and it clicked again. But uh, the original was in that very dark phase that I mentioned because while I was in that mental dark phase, I had a car accident. And that really changed a lot of things. Um, frontal collision, both cars completely totaled. Um, but I walked away seemingly okay. Right. But then the pain started afterwards, as it usually comes with car accidents, unless you have broken bones or something. Um, I had a whiplash in the upper back, and uh, it got so bad. I was lying on the sofa with heating pads and everything. And, I mean, I went to physical therapy, then right. to a chiropractor, and it was just a long phase of trying to heal it. But if you're in the beginning of 30s and suddenly you can't put your socks on the way you're used to it. Yeah. Yeah. It hits you. Oh, yeah. And I mean, I have, like I said, I have my cats and we play all the time. And it's just what I do. And I, certain movements were just simply not possible anymore. And suddenly you were just blocked. And that was the beginning of 30s that really hit me mentally, yeah. additionally to everything that was going on. So I went to physical therapy. I, uh, I had done yoga before, but then tried to increase it. Um, 
but I realized without getting this better, that wouldn't get better. Right. So I, I started the BUB Happy, started to look into happiness, well-being, uh, yoga, anything that I could find. And I actually found that quote from Mel Robbins a uh, while ago, and it mm -hmm. said, if you want to quiet your mind, you have to quiet your body. Yep. And it is so true. It if is. You do physical therapy, uh, physical therapy. If you do physical activities, you do quiet your mind. Try to go down a rabbit hole while you're trying yeah. to run. <laughs> Sorry. You're too distracted. Yeah. And this is not a challenge, <laughs> but for me, it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so just trying to get more of that mobility in, into my daily life, uh, healthy habits and all of that. And it really was a game changer. Right. Did it fix everything within a week? Absolutely. No. It's a long journey. It's never going to. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's it's still not done. Actually, the, the whiplash in the upper back then led to, which I didn't know I had, uh, an interior pelvic tilt. Um, so upper back and lower back interacted and just made that worse. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. That, that took me a year to figure out. I changed the chiropractor to somebody that, I mean, Olivia, my chiropractor, <laughs> <laughs> she knows I talk about her. I Whoever needs a chiropractor, I send her, send everyone to her. She listens to you. She listens to you, not to you as a number in her, you know, right. uh, customer book. No, she listens to you. And she doesn't just hear, oh, you have issues in your lower back? Oh, I'll crack that and you get a massage and that every week and you'll be good. No, she looks head to toe right. with everything. I mean, mental and everything. She's been an angel. And just over time, and she knew what I was doing on social media and all the yoga and right. The whole process of learning to listen to my body, she knew about it and that helped along with her to really understand what's going on. Yeah. I think, and that's one thing too, um, because, you know, we'll be honest, you know, you can tell I'm, I'm no, I'm no specimen of physical health here, but <laughs> what I have noticed for me personally is that, you know, when I <clears throat> don't take my medicine and when I don't take care of my stomach, um, because I have stomach issues and I'm like, if, if there's times when I'm not feeling well, mm -hmm. I mentally don't feel well, but if I take my medicine on time and I avoid certain foods and I do those kinds of things, yeah, my mental health is still a little bit off, but it doesn't push me down as much of a rabbit hole to try and climb back out of because I'm like, now I'm physically sick and I, I don't, I'm in a funk and then they just don't mesh. So I definitely, I definitely understand where you're coming from in, in an aspect, maybe, you know, not as, not as fully, but in some ways I kind of get the link mm -hmm. um, that, that you're, that you're describing. So I know you mentioned yoga. Is there anything else that you do besides yoga that kind of works for you? Because I know a lot of people, um, my boss at work, um, he, he attends uh, uh, yoga, but it's trauma-centered yoga. Um, so, you know, you go and you, he you, you heal through yoga, basically. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the practitioners are specialized in that area. And so it can definitely be one of those things that helps bring everything around. Um, are there any other activities that you like to do that kind of also give you the same feeling Mm -hmm. The funny thing is actually on my page, I have that habit tracker oh, that everybody yep. can download for free. And that's where I try to track what I do. And I try to do a mix. Only yoga is not going to do it, right? especially with the whole physical aspect. So I'm trying to do yoga is one. And it's been, I mean, yoga is not simply yoga. If you do it for a couple of months, you will feel what. Oh, yeah. It's more a mental thing than that people think. Over time, you see how more stable you are, how much stronger you get and all of that. But that's yoga is one thing. I try to do right. more mobility exercises. I do more strength exercises and I do cardio. I got this, not a treadmill, a tread climber. So you have two oh, mm -hmm. wheels, but you have to step up. That kicks your behind. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are... Those are um, one of a kind. We'll just put it that way because I've um, 
so we have the thing in ours. It's it's uh, kind of like that. I think they're called like the ones that our drummer like called the Stairmaster. Is technically what they're called. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, man, if I wanted to do this, I'd just go walk up and down the stairs. Because yeah. that's what it feels like. It feels like you're walking up like 10 flights of stairs. It, yeah. And it's a good workout. And, it, and it's easier than doing some other things for people who have problems with certain mobility issues. But, man, yeah. <laughs> it My kicks your butt. I used, well, I wasn't a big runner, but I started at one point and I wanted to keep that up. Realistically, now it was winter. I'm not going to start in winter. Plus, I uh, had knee issues at one point, so I'm trying to get into it carefully. And I just moved to a new neighborhood. There are quite some hills. Well, hills is maybe overstatement, but <laughs> it's definitely going up first. And that's, as a beginner, to imagine, okay, let's go. And then first thing you do is go up the hill. Yeah. And everybody may, not that everybody's waiting at the windows, waiting for you to come by, but of course, that's what you imagine. Everybody's going to see you fail. Mm -hmm. No. It's like so everybody's. I, everybody knows the exact time you're going out, so they're gonna be like, <laughs> which oh. I know is not true. The funny thing was actually January first. You would not believe how many runners I saw outside. Mm -hmm. You wanted to know how many I see now? Like two. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, I was laughing a little bit because I was putting down my my goals. Well, not goals, but the habits that I want to work on this year, mm -hmm. and to see exactly that. You start January 1st, and a week later, two weeks later, that's it. And that's what I didn't want. So it was funny to, to read about habits and how I want to get this done and how I want to achieve the goal that I have at one point. Right. It, to see that outside in front of my door was actually really funny. Well, that's become, here in the United States, it's pretty much, I don't know, I can't speak for other countries, but that seems to become the norm you know, over the past 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. ever since I can remember, you know, you'll go and be like, Oh, you know, New Year's is approaching. I gotta, I gotta make my goals for new year. It's the and new almost, start blank page. <laughs> yeah. Like, and almost everybody you see, they're like, Oh, I'm going to work on this physical and this physical. And you don't really, you don't really, they don't really think about, okay, I'm going to get overwhelmed if I, if I put it like this, but if I'm like, okay, I do want to be, my goal is to be more active this year, but I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and then give yourself, you know, a period of time to do one and a period of time to do another. And then you got to work into it because otherwise you'll just quit. Like, it's just, that's why there's no more runners. Yeah, you just quit. exactly. Um, so I, I, I definitely got that. Whoopsie. Yes, such a good book. <laughs> it just fit such to that. Book. Yeah, I just started reading that, and I'll write about that too. Just get those micro habits, and it's so true. Start with something small, mm -hmm. even if it's ten minutes of walking each day, and then you just slowly increase it. It that's the key. Exactly. Yeah. Like for me, you know, it was one of those things where I knew exercising wasn't going to do any good unless I changed my habits of eating and the things I was taking in before I did that. Cause you can exercise all you want, but if you're not changing those other habits, it's not going to stick. So I was like, okay, what? I know I get overwhelmed easy. So let me start by, you know, changing my multivitamin to something all natural and healthy. Well, mm -hmm. now a year later, that's in the medicine organizer every day. You don't even have to think about it. You're just taking it. Okay, well, I can add turmeric that helps with, you know, blood pressure and the circulation and everything else. So let me add that to the organizer. So you're implementing these things slowly and you're, you're not really thinking about it because you're like, okay, that's just part of my routine now. And so if you let those settle in and then you add another one, exactly. you have a better chance of going mm -hmm. to where you want to be. And if um, you, I mean, that's a good thing. You put it in your organizer. You have it visual. You see mm -hmm. it. Yep. That's why those habit trackers, if you're, if you're more that visual person, write it down. Exactly. And if you visually see, like me this week, I haven't done yoga. I, I know I, why I had a reason for it, but right. I also see I did cardio. So at least I did something. So I can right. go through the days. I don't have to give myself a hard time because I didn't do A, but I did B and C. 
So you can be kinder to yourself and make it visual. But also, if you really see, hey, I haven't done it in two days, right? I should. If you don't make it visual, sometimes a week goes by and you're like, where was the last time I did something? <laughs> right. Huh. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, because I know that, for me too, like that helped me. I have to color. Like I have to put color on things because I'll have the habit of like just walking right by. Mm -hmm. So like if you, you know, if you have a fear person who who learns better visually and, and keeps track of things, but you're like, oh man, I, I don't want to put it somewhere where I'm gonna forget. Mm -hmm. um, I do this little thing with my affirmations where I'll write several of them out on different color sticky notes. I'll put some in the bathroom, some in the kitchen, some on the back of my door, some on the front of my door, because then no matter where you go, you're seeing them, but also it helps you kind of remember because everything's a different color. So it's going to catch your attention when you walk by. Um, so that's one thing that, you know, if you, if that's the kind of, if that's what helps you is kind of writing things out and visualizing things, mm -hmm. well, keeping I know something I catch you. Though is I have to change where I put them. It can right. be the same sticky notes, but change where you put them. Cause otherwise I go blind to that. I know there is something exactly it anymore. Yeah. And I'm, that that's the perfect thing too. That's why I do several rooms. And the good thing, you know, like for example, with my kitchen, you know, you can easily change the spot on the cupboard or which cupboard or yeah. the freezer or the fridge or wherever you have so many options. So that's why, you know, having a room that has a lot of options also helps you. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was your blog. Um, you want to kind of like, share, how did that blog even come about? Was it just, you wanted to share what you were learning um, and what you experienced or, or what was, how did that come about for you in the first place? So the very beginning was on Instagram. That That's just how I very easily started. Right. With those little tiny, I mean, how many signs do you have? It's not many. You, you can't write a lot. Right. But it was enough for the beginning. So that's just where I started. Um, but eventually I wanted to write more about the books that I read um, just wanted to give more insight of what I learned or maybe yoga poses. And I noticed I was just very limited in that right. platform. So that's why I added my page and it just gives you more options to, to write about things, to maybe add more videos into it and link to the actual pages where it came right. from. Just gave me more freedom. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a good thing too, because you're, you're realizing like, certain socials are good for certain things and you know so you can kind of be like well i only have something small i want to share so i can i can put on instagram or you know a youtube short or something like that but if i have you know a book you read or something like that you know that might require a blog post or or a full longer video um so i think that's that's definitely a good idea because it's just and also for me at least i don't know about you but writing helps tremendously um, yeah being able to whether it's journaling or working on my book or just writing whatever nonsense comes to my mind it kind of helps you just declutter the brain um see that's actually where this came from for me that's like if you go to school or university you right. read something and writing it down putting it in in instagram into certain shapes and patterns and how to make it uh, appealing and understandable. That's my homework for it. Yep. So, I mean, this is what the journey is. It's my journey. I'm not, I'm not coming from anywhere in the health <laughs> right. industry. I haven't learned this. So this is my journey to learn about well-being, positivity, self-growth and all that's what I'm presenting. And that's what I want to bring to the people. Right. And I think it's too, one thing that I've found really helpful, um, is depending on the social media platform, you can find a, a, a big group of like-minded individuals who are either trying to do what you're doing or who have, have been sharing their journey for a long time. That's how I met you. That's how I've met most of my guests that I have is simply mm -hmm. because I've, I've had the privilege to be able to see them grow and then to be able to revamp their pages and be like, look, this is no longer good for me. So I need to, I need to do it this way which is just more growth and it's great to see. <clears throat> um, what socials do you have? Where can people find you? 
Um, so like I said, Instagram is, is still it's my main one. thing, but the blog is definitely improving. Uh, like you said, things change all the time. Right. I actually just revamped my entire structure again, which is of course not visible like that, but <laughs> going forward, it's going to change quite a right. bit. Um, I'm trying to grow the YouTube a little bit more simply by just putting more videos on YouTube right. as well and on Facebook just to, most of it is copy paste. Instagram is going to be the main thing, but also it's going to be Facebook, YouTube, right. and the blog for just larger information. Right. Um, and I will, guys, I will have all of those linked below so you can go check her out and, and see what she's all about. And you should follow her anyways, because, you know, good information. So you, you never know what you, what you might learn. Um, I want to thank you for giving me your time today. It's been, it's been a great time and I really appreciate it. Um, I hope Thank that you, you have a great rest of your day. <laughs> you too. Happy Sunday. Happy, <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see who's going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, <laughs> football's not my thing, but the commercials, you get me with the commercials. <laughs> Even if it's just hanging out with the crowd. And I, I'm not big into football either, but I like hanging out with people. <laughs> right. All right. Have a great rest of your day. You too. Thank you. Bye.